him out to California next day. There's a little screen test and, and brought him on board. This film is called The Banksters and it connects a lot of dots. What I found fascinating about this film is that the information within it is totally contrary to what we are told when we watch the media. The media does their job really well and uh, they're here to hide the truth, not to tell you the truth, but, but to hide it from you and to mislead you. Um, and of course the media is owned by the banksters. The bankers are connected to everything, terrorism, war, abuse. Scandals, Ponzi's, what can you say? I mean, it's, it's a never-ending subject matter. And I think uh, even the brand Banksters is growing daily. Do you think we can see a new America? This movie is, is to inspire young children with cameras, iPhone cameras, whatever, to, to what, what offends them, what is offensive to your spirit, to your soul. Make a little movie about it. We need more originality. We need more, more, more organic, genuine concern. We, we need the brilliant, the brilliant children that haven't been completely drugged, or even ourselves, to use their, their goodness to create, not duplicate, but to create something, to express who they are, who they came to be. And I think no, no better discipline than film. Because film, you have sound, you have motion, you have images. And the poets of old only could write things. That's all they could do. Now we have this incredible ability to, to impact the thought and the mind. And I think it's been misused a lot. And uh, so it's time to use it in, in, in the correct way, to expose the people that are manipulating us and our children, causing us pain and suffering. Um, and if we're those people, then we need to stop. Uh, it starts with the individual, not, not so much pointing outward, but pointing inward and, and saying, okay, I've corrected the things that I see. Now, let me help others that are under attack. And that's re really what it's all about. It's called compassion. Uh, it's called humanity. Bernie Madoff, of course, you know him as the reviled Wall Street greed monger who was allegedly the mastermind behind a $65 billion scam that ruined people's lives. Well, now Hollywood wants to tell that story. It's just searching for a star. Watch as producer Edmund Droulier relentlessly looks for that fatal combination of superficial charm and unbridled greed. We trade a trillion dollars a year. This guy's Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, okay? So let your hide right now. Let's okay. go ahead and take it from the top, a little slimy. One day we do a trillion dollars. I, I think the Banksters uh, is, is a brand that is going to be around for a while. The Banksters are people um, that absolutely have financed both sides of most all wars. And the Banksters are the only ones that profit from these wars. Um, as people say, you know, the Unfederal Reserve if they didn't have the Federal Reserve, they couldn't cause people to run out of their homes and kill each other. Think about that. You had, a, you had a World War I and people lost their family members and mothers and fa I mean fathers and children. And yet, a few years later, they run off the war again. How do you get people to do that? That's not easy. But the banksters have their ways. They call it false flags. You call it, uh, I mean, there's never been a war that wasn't a false flag. I mean, tell me one. Um, the Ragstag fire in Germany, you got 9-11 in America. Uh, you, you have all of these events that just seem to happen. And uh, if you connect the dots, you'll see it's always the same people, the banksters. Yeah, I mean, right now, uh, in the news today, ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, they're, they're talking about uh, the Madoff CEO. My client may be willing to uh, deal in terms of securing the state's evidence. Oh, and so that's big news. So it's kind of topical. So even with Woody Allen making the uh, Blue Jasmine, that was Ruth Madoff's character in Blue Jasmine. So it's a very topical subject matter. I think it'll be for a while because there's a lot of covering up to do. I think Bernie Madoff uh, was part of the cover up, the LIBOR scandal, the trillions of dollars of uh, keep keeping the focus off of other things. What apparently. So so this thing has been the movie's been very fluid with changing as as the news came out, as the son's suicide, as all of these things happen. So it's a very unique experience, very interesting. People want fantasy. They want to see movies and and that's fine, but but I think what's needed in the world is is reality. More reality. I mean people are starting to need the truth. They're losing their homes, they're losing 
the future of their children, uh, they, they lose any type of parental guidance. It seems like children are starting to follow all these uh, characters they've been fed in the media. Um, in this film, Edmund, you, 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 you throw, it's quite risky because you've, uh, you've exposed the game. Do you think you could, you could upset a few people here? Banksters. Why are these mega criminals all working together? You goddamn stupid son of a bitch! You're supposed to be keeping a lid on this. We are also taking American films to new places like Kazakhstan, Ukraine, Azerbaijan. This is like 600 million people that don't have access to American content online. Where are you from? I'm from Luxembourg, the smallest country in the world almost, between France and Germany. Terry Moore here, thank you so much for coming out. Well, thank you. Really I'm looking forward to the movie. We've known all the same people. And, That's right, over the oh years. My gosh. Including Edmund. And Edmund, as you know, is a very brave guy who tackled a very important subject in a different way. We like that. This awesome. is why we are supporting him. I like it. These big banks that uh, mm -hmm. have done a runner with the money from America. Goldman Sachs. Like Goldman Sachs and, and Wahlberg's. I've been thinking the same process here and, and, and trying to connect dots here. And, and what I've seemed to find is the city of London has been there for a long time. It's not London, it's the city of London, it's a corporation. And it's a mothership apparently to every city in America. So city of Los Angeles Incorporated, Los Angeles Incorporated, uh, 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 Palm Beach, Florida Palm Beach Incorporated. They're all incorporated and uh, a corporation that falls under the city of London. So therefore, the mayor is, uh, is the boss of the corporation. It's like the president is the boss of the U.S. United States corporation, but they all fall under, and Obama is the president of the U.S. corporation. And uh, they seem to all, according to law, according to their law books, Black's Law, um, not this isn't opinion, this isn't emotion, but in black and white, the city of London owns everything. So what is the City of London? Does the Queen own the City of London? From my research, she's a figurehead. Okay, and the banksters own the City of London. So that, that is really, you know, people talk about how there's a couple of corporations that own every store that you see and every city that you see. How can that be? Unless it's as I just mentioned. Uh, you know, a corporation owns a corporation owns a corporation, and it gets back to the city of London. This whole idea of um, the LIBOR scandal and how the interest rates between the London banks, only the London banks, set this LIBOR scandal. Um, the rates, the interest rates in which banks borrow money from one another. And that apparently wiped out almost every city, bankrupt every city in America because of the interest rates and the fluctuation and what happened there. So again, that goes back to the city of London. Bernie Madoff may have been covering up the city of London. Still looking for 65 billion. Yeah, good luck, good luck for that. that. He had an office there in London. So this is, this is an area that really needs to be researched and uh, to find the truth about uh, what, what you just asked. I think it's a very important question. I think, I think it, it would help. The, the problem we have in America is a title of nobility, attorneys a turn property back to the king. It's a, it's a title of nobility. So they're not going to go against the king. They're not going to go against England, although England was always our original enemy and still is. We, did we ever get independence from England? That's the magical question. Did we ever get it and do we have it now? That's the magical question. Are we part of the, the, the British colonies? location from London at this very beautiful California beach and we're here to interview Dave Edmonds also known as Edmund Drouillet. Yeah, basically we, we shot a lot of the film here in Southern California we, we shot also in Switzerland England or in Switzerland London we, we shot in Palm Beach Aspen Antigua we shot um, in Cannes. And you're gonna start off in Los Angeles. We are premiering in Westwood October 9th at 6 o'clock. Red carpet starts at 6 o'clock press and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, it's called realizing that we are connected to one another, whether we like it or not. And uh, in the giving is receiving and helping others is the only true, real way that you're ever gonna be happy. You can only get so much stuff. 
Um, and then it comes down to where do you fit in this world? Do you have friends? Do people love you? Do people care about you? If not, why? And so, so I think these are the things, that, the realizations that are happening to us now. And the harder it gets, the more we, we have to gravitate towards freedom. Uh, the more we enslave, the more we want to get out of the cage. So I think a lot of this is happening so that we will be forced to evolve and to do what's right. And we'll be, we'll, we'll be revealed for who we are. Conspiracy films, films that, that some call conspiracy and some people call truth, the truth. Uh, so I think when someone doesn't want to believe something or consider something, they have a closed mind, they, they call it conspiracy. They use it to jump. You know, I think that, that word was branded like in conspiracy theory with Mel Gibson to make him, uh, anyone who, who used the word conspiracy is a, co a complete fool, an idiot, uh, you know, no brain, uh, can't think, retarded. And I think uh, it's very important for the media to brand that conspiracy. So uh, I think these Manhattan advertisement firms are very good at what they do. And they pervert words. Uh, they uh, utilize uh, branding in that, in that fashion, like support your troops. Well, yeah, well, yeah, of course, once you get the troops illegally over there in a war, and they say, support your troops. What are you going to do, not support your troops? You're not American. You're, you're, you're a terrorist. How dare you not support your troops? Well, you didn't want your troops to go there anyway. But now that they're there, you say, it's a game. It's, it's a magic trick. It's, it's, uh, they're very good at it, and they, they're doing it uh, again and again and again and again.